Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at coloured chemistry. We've already covered lots of different colour chemistry within other videos, however I wanted to bring together all of those aspects under one heading. Today we'll be looking at flame colours, transition metal complexes and organic compounds. Let's have a look at flame colours. To produce a, to produce a flame colour, first a metal solution is vaporised in a flame. This uses heat to excite an electron from the ground state to a higher energy state. This electron will then eventually have to fall back to its ground state from the, the higher energy state. As it falls back to the ground state, it will release a photon of light. This photon of light may be of a wavelength within the visible spectrum. If the wavelength is within the visible spectrum, then you'll be able to see that as a colour. You can calculate the energy of this photon of light using the following equation. Often, we need to calculate things in kilojoules per mole in chemistry, so we're more likely to use this equation. When you have a transition metal on its own, all five of the d orbitals are degenerate. I've shown the d orbitals here in two separate groups so that we can explain what happens when we then put this into a complex. So here we have two of the d orbitals. So we have the dz squared, which is this one here on the z axis. And along the x and y axis, we have the dx squared minus y squared. These orbitals face along the axes and therefore face towards any ligands which start to approach. The other orbitals face in between the axes. So we have the dzy, which is in between the z axes and the y axes. So that's this one here. We also have the dxy, which is between the y axes and the x axes. And then finally, the dxz between the x axes and the z axes. This is quite a complex diagram. As these ones face in between the axes, this means that they do not face the ligands directly when the ligands start to approach the metal um, ion when we have form a complex. This diagram here shows the five degenerate d orbitals, whereas here we can see that they have now split in energy. So the ones down at the bottom are those which face between the axes, and the ones up at the top are those that face towards the axes. These ones are higher in energy because as the ligands approach, and ligands have a lone pair of electrons to form a dative covalent bond with, they then repel any electrons which are within these orbitals already. These ones become lower in energy as their electrons face in between the approaching ligands. This value here, delta, is determined by which ligands you use. So this is the crystal field splitting, which can be small or large. It's smallest for halogens, uh, larger for ligands which bond through nitrogen, larger still for those that bond through oxygen, and largest for those that bond through a carbon atom. Energy absorbed by the compound from light causes excitation of an electron to a higher energy level. For example, this electron may be excited to the higher energy level. The energy that gets absorbed is equal to that of the delta value. The remaining wavelengths which have not been absorbed are transmitted. So for a transition metal complex we see the complementary colour to that which is absorbed. If you change which ligand that you use you will change the delta value and this means that the energy that absorbed will change and thus the colour that is then transmitted will also change. Let's now look at the last type of coloured compounds, which are organic compounds. Generally, organic compounds are not coloured. However, those which are very large conjugated molecules can have complex molecular orbital systems. And this can lead to delocalisation of electrons and a similar mode of action to the transition metal complexes. 
In a small conjugated system, the gap between the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is too large to be within the visible region. However, when you make the conjugation, which is an alternating system of double and single bonds, larger, then the delta value here becomes smaller. Once that value is within the visible region, then we can see a colour for the compound. In a similar manner to the transition metal complexes, light is absorbed to promote an electron from the HOMO to the LUMO. This then allows the rest of the visible light to be transmitted and then we see the complementary colour for the compound. The smaller the gap that we have between the HOMO and the LUMO, the larger the conjugation that there will be. Pause the video now and try these two questions to do with colour. For question 1, you need to have a look at page 20 in the data book. You need to identify the colour of wavelength 580 nanometers, which we'll see is at the border of yellow-green and yellow. If a transition metal complex absorbs 580 nanometers, then it will transmit the opposite colour. So this means that this complex will be a violet-blue colour. For question 2, an organic compound absorbs light of wavelength 700 nanometers. Does this have a large or small conjugation system? 700 nanometers is equivalent to red on the colour field, and this is of a lower energy. Therefore, this must have quite a large conjugation system if we're going to be absorbing quite a small energy, because the homo-lumo gap must be quite small. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.